G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Cancer Me Now podcast. My name's Isaac Butterfield and I've got the shits today. I'm here with Bluey Nielsen and I'm fucking ropeable. What's wrong, mate? You've been fucking sulking since I got here. It's just been a day and a night. Talk to me. What's wrong? I went to the footy last night. Oh. State of origin. Last This is last week for you idiots listening today. <laughs> <laughs> don't take it out on the punters. Don't, now, hey, that, that I will not cop. Take it out on me. Go fucking hammer time on Lordy. Oh, but you do not take it out on the audience. On fucking Lordy. But you do not take it out on our beautiful audience. What's wrong? Well, I've only got the shits because Rosie bit me. His dog's turned on him. <laughs> my beautiful dog. My beautiful darling. Uh, oh. She didn't even She didn't even bite. But you know when if, if you hurt a dog, they like go, rah, they rah. just react. Oh, just fucking stop it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're right. Stop it. God, just fucking leave me alone, Butterfield. Well, she's got an old racing industry because she was fucking raced by these dumb cunts that bet on dogs because they're the most backward, stupid cunts of all time. Fuck, if that's you and you listen to this, give yourself an uppercut. You just reminded me, I've got a good tip for you later for something running it down. I'll fucking <laughs> chop your tip off, cunt. How about that? <laughs> anyway, so I, we're over at Claire's parents' house because she looked after the dog. They looked after the dogs last night. And I was just like, come on, love, we've got to go. You know, we've got to start the potty. And so I went to, she hates getting picked up off a of land. I don't know why I did it. And she gets into a defensive, like on her back position, like, fuck off, Butterfield. And then I was too close and she sort of not went to bite me, but like went to like fucking hug off. And just then nipped you. Just, no, I just, I just caught a tooth on my nose. And so I'm bleeding and Claire's parents are like, oh, Christ. <laughs> so it's been a bad afternoon. So I'm walking out of the house with blood all down my fucking nose. Is and that the worst part of your day? This is the worst injury I've ever had to my face. Except for like a broken nose, but you, you can't see that. Hard enough of it, mate. This is the worst I've ever had. And from Rosie. And I and I spruik all day about how beautiful and wonderful she is. And she is, no doubt. Yeah, clearly. But she's a fucking violent motherfucker in her old age, I'll tell you that. She wasn't happy. Has something else happened or is this why you're in a bad mood? Because you got nipped on the nose. And the Blues lost last night. That sucks. That sucks. That put me in a bad mood. Yeah. I always get, I'm always ready to fight after footy games. I don't know why. I just want to fight. I um, I went to bed filthy, filthy. last night. I was real shitty. Really short with the misses and I may, yep. have, may have booted the dog. No, I didn't. <laughs> Gotta go. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> How about this? This is what really pissed me off and it still pissed me off now. The beer line. Oh. Beer line at sporting events are atrocious. And the price. And what, the oh. what, what'd you pay for a mid strength? What were they serving, first of all? Um Well, me, my brother Jonas, he thought he was heaps smart because he went and got around and they poured the beers and then the, the other lady you paid. Yeah. So he got some um half strength, because that's all you can get. Half strength uh 150 lashes, and he told him that it was 4X. Oh, what a genius. Well done. So saved a couple of bob there. But um, for four beers of 4X, I think I got later on, 38 bucks yeah, or something. about 12 bucks a pop, eh? That's crook. Killer. Absolute killer. Oh. And um, and a Any- dollar for a tray? That's that's wrong. A dollar for one of those the little, little trays? Plastic. Um, any food? Uh, food options? Uh, well, we actually, we we went, we were in uh, staying at uh, Dad's parents' house, my grandparents' house. In um, they're in the Riff, aren't they? Out near, west near Penrith, yeah. And so we caught the train in, and uh, you know, fought for our lives on there. That would have been an experience. Ooh, I tell you what, dry, um, getting the train home was pretty easy, but we were we were coming through St Mary's there, or um, Mount Druid, I think it was, just at the station before St Mary's. This is in Western Sydney, for those of you who don't know, who are lucky enough not to know. <laughs> Blessed. Um, and there's this ten year old kid running through. With a bum bag and cursor playing, just sprints through the train and everyone's just goes, fucking what was that? If you were looking for that fight after the footy, I'm sure no doubt him. you could have you could have. I bet he had it. a blade on him and everything. <laughs> so to the beer lines, this is just before kickoff, right? No, eleven sorry, seven thirty. Yeah, what is it? At eight oh five kickoff. Eight ten kickoff. Mm. Actually kicked off at eight twelve. Would have been fucking cold. It was freezing. So I had a I had a jumper, I had a jersey on over the jumper, uh, and a big jacket. Anyway, and uh, so I'm waiting in line. I've got forty minutes before kickoff. <laughs> Easy, mate. Ten minutes goes Just. past. Twenty minutes goes past, and these fucking idiots at a core stadium in Sydney <laughs> have got three people serving, and, and there's a th- there's eighty thousand people. Arguably one of the biggest sporting events in the country of the year, at the, at the very most of the year. 
And they've got three people serving on this tiny bar. And they've got about, you know, six or seven bars, three people on each. And the, the, the big point of it is, and the big, like, the time-consuming thing is pouring the beers out of every fucking can because you can't have cans because one idiot threw a can at a player who probably deserved it. 100%. And so you've got to pour all the beers out. And I'm there and, and everyone's, like, trying to hurry the people up who are behind. And it's this old woman just going, oh. Crack. Get into her. Just crack. Let her know. What a stupid cunt. Honestly, open the fucking beer up and pour it out. How hard is it? Uh, why don't you have taps? The annoying thing for, yeah, one, why don't they have beer taps? Two, put some more fucking stuff on. They're paying them about the same as what the people who make iPhones get. You charge me 12 bucks for a beer. Put another idiot on. Put them on. Put the, and charge, like cans, like a carton of cans. What, what does that cost? What's the mark up there? Well, uh, cost price of a carton of, what are these? Coopers? Coopers, what'd you say? 50, 60 bucks? Let's say, let's say 50. Just, be, just say 50, easy number. Cost price, maybe 35? Yeah, if, I don't they're, even buying, know. if they're buying a thousand cartons I, for the footy. I don't even know. I don't even know. Yeah, but probably, yeah, really yeah. cheap. And they're charging 12 bucks. <laughs> so all they have to do is sell three of them. Yeah. And they've got their money back on the beer. Yeah. And it's all profit. And each person's getting paid $18.50 an hour. Yeah. Man, oh, fuck me. And anyway, so 30 minutes goes past. I've barely moved. People are, and then this idiot. This idiot gets the wrong card out, doesn't have any money on his card. Then these fucking women in front of me. Don't get me started. She gets up there, these two fucking idiots, both Queensland supporters. Can we try this one? Oh, she goes, what do you want? I'm like, you've been in line for an hour. <laughs> you fucking should know. Yeah, that, that would boil me. Christ. That would boil me. That's annoying. You can see why so, fights break out at sporting oh, events. I was ready. Shit. I was by myself. I was ready to fucking go. Shadow boxing. And so we get to, I get to the front. Then the, the national anthem starts playing, right? And old love behind the bar goes, sorry, mate, I better stop the national anthem's playing. Go. I go, no, pour it. And I get heaps short. I just pour it. She goes, but the anthem, I, I don't, don't care. Fuck the anthem. I said, <laughs> and I said to Claire later on, I was like, if the Anzacs didn't fight for us to sit and have a beer at the footy and yeah. watch the kickoff of the biggest sporting event in Australia, I don't know what they fought for. That, that would... The diggers would be turning in their graves more at the fact of you not getting your beer 100%. than anyone talking through the anthem. 100%. 100%. They don't care. They're no, like, fuck. That's what they fought for. 100%. The, is to, to have a beer at the footy and not have to worry about some woman on $18 an hour pouring a 4X because that's all I could get apparently. And they sold out of beanies. The Mark Hughes Foundation beanies. No, they didn't have any there. They should have had them there. Why wouldn't they not have them there? When he, that would be coming up very soon, the Beanies for Brain Cancer round. Shout out to Mark Hughes Foundation. Just yes, absolutely. Awesome work. Absolutely. They do great work for brain, brain cancer. Um, I'm sporting one right now, if you can see. These but are great, but I think they're, what, 10 bucks each or something? 25. Ah, oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. How's the markup, Hughesy, you fucking <laughs> rat bag? Hughesy lined his pockets. No, Jesus it's, all, Christ. it's all for brain cancer. He does drive around in G, two G-Wagons. He does. He's got he one does. for every day of the week, yeah. apparently. Yeah. No, they do amazing stuff. Um, I have one as well. I just don't have it on at the moment. But we got there and Claire wanted a beanie. And she had a beanie on already. I think it was an old Mark Hughes one. But she wanted a blues beanie, you know? I was sold out of beanie. I was like, what the fuck are you people doing? Every year, there are a bunch of fucking tards in there. Gouging. Price gouging, scrotum grabbing. So it was a bad experience and the boys got beat too. And they got beat. So it was a fucking oh. shit experience. And then you've come home and your dog bit you. <laughs> <laughs> Suck shit. <laughs> but it's, I had a great day, by the way. But it's not just. How, how, Lordy, how are you doing? You, you, well. I've had a great day. And, you know, it's not just. Um, and it's I won't blame just Rosie because Littlefoot. Um, he he went for me when I tried to like do his like cut his toenails. Don't bring little foot into this, mate. He, this he, is <laughs> this is this is Rosie's problem and Rosie's alone. Don't you bring innocent I'm little little foot. Maybe she was on the beers last night and she's just feeling a bit shit today. Just fucking cranky. She just had also the cranky about the footy. Because he, here's the problem: Claire's parents took them for a walk, which was lovely. So we don't have to walk her now. And she was asleep in the lounge. All of a sudden, this big idiot walks in who needs to go to a podcast that 400 people listen to a year. Get up. And I'm like, come on, get up. And she's like, fuck off, mate. <laughs> anyway, so she's, so she's attacked me. She's gone for me nose. Imagine if she bit me old nose off. Imagine that. Imagine I walk in here with no nose. I would still expect you to be doing the podcast. There are no excuses. No <laughs> injury. Mate, if she bit my nose off, this is how much I love this dog, I wouldn't I wouldn't care. I'd be like, oh, well. You seem to care a fair bit right now. You've got a fucking pimple on your nose. <laughs> what? Um, Can you not leave the dogs alone for one night? Like, can you not leave them here by themselves for one night? No. Who what? the fuck does that? A anyone who owns an animal. That's what some idiot would do with a Kelpie, wouldn't they? Oh, yeah, she'll be right. You'll run around the house like a They're big idiot. They're not people or babies. They're animals. Like, you can leave them. Where are they going to shit? 
outside. They don't have to stay in the house. Not every dog's an inside dog. If you leave your dog outside, you're a fucking abuser. Are you serious? Do you leave Bill outside? Yeah, I'm a guy that Yeah, but use a use a weird like What do you do with your dog? Don't you have a big Labrador, a golden retriever? He's I got a retriever. Where do they sleep? You know all that hair on them? Where does it sleep? Hey? Where does it sleep? Sometimes inside, sometimes outside. Oh my god. What you, th- what do you have an outside dog bed for? You, to I but we don't, but oh, yeah, no, you we guys do. you you would admit you but you would both admit right now that you yeah, you guys obsess you are obsessed with your dog. Like we, everyone loves their dogs. We love animals, yeah. Yeah, you can let them sleep outside. Littlefoot and Rosie sometimes lay on the outside bed in the morning to get a bit of sun. I want to see in the comment, like, you can leave dogs outside. There is a direct correlation between leaving your dogs outside and bashing your missus. You can give your missus a slap sometime, yes. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? One of of the great Sean Connery lines when he's like, sometimes you got to give them a slap. Sometimes you need to give them a little bit of a slap. Sometimes they get a bit mouthy, you got to give them a bit of a slap. (laughs) Isn't he from a different era? (laughs) Fucking Sean Connery. A fucking great era, I might add. Because how old old was Sean Connery, Bill? I'll have a look. Has he passed away? Nah. Yeah, no, he has. I'm is sure he? he has. That that was why that cl- that was one of the only reasons I saw that clip. They oh. were trying to besmirch his good name after he passed away, and they were like, "Iconic James Bond actor, blah blah blah." Also, oh, he died in 2020. Also, didn't mind giving his missus a he was 80. A tap. Oh no, he was 90. <laughs> he had a good innings. 90 years old. He would have done some rooting too. That so part. he was born in 1930. He would have done that much rooting. Yeah, yeah. 1930. So. Think about it like this. Like his father. No, he wasn't born in 1930 because that would have meant he died in. Oh, no. You're right. Correct. Go I was on. just looking at it, you yeah, fucking sorry. hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> My mistake. Go on. No, that's not right. <laughs> um, Give me a bit of a slap. So, uh, sometimes you deserve it. a bit of a slap. So his father, let's say he was born in 1900. Like that's that's a long time ago. That's a whole different era. That's a whole different world. The world would look very different. And, and giving your partner, your, your female partner, a bit of a slap <laughs> is like the, the – that's what you do after you have your first piss in the morning. It's, that's Guys, coffee. Coffee. Slap. Slap down. <laughs> bit of WWE Smackdown. Off to work. And then you're off to work to go and fucking – Come home. Nearly die every day working in a fucking steel mill. Just – this terrible era. time. How about this? I've never – I've never, really, I've, I've always thought this, never really brought it up on the podcast – Imagine living a hundred years ago. How dry your skin would be. Be nearly as dry as mine now in this uh, winter wind. Just all the time, and you wake up. You know these guys like the bush rangers who sleep outside. Yeah. Fuck that. Imagine the bo. I always think of the oh. Pong. There'd be some pong. Imagine how bad bad pussies it smell. Oh. Oh, and dicks oh, and, and blurters and the blurters, assholes. Oh, they'd be off. You'd have big fucking dags. piles and dags. Is it dags when? Remember, was it dags when they're talking about sheep? Like when it gets shit gets caught in the sheep's nah, backside? Nah. Oh, maybe, but I think that's a dag. What's the other word? Um, is that a dag, Lordy? Can we confirm? Dingleberries, <laughs> dingleberries. Same, yeah, yeah. I believe same, 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 same. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> dangle, dingle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> The dingle of the dangle. This is why you listen to this podcast. Yeah, you get the, the sheep, the sheep knowledge. Talking about giving your missus a tap and shit. Yeah, you got you got shit hanging out of your asshole and you're flinging punches at your missus. Your dog's biting you. Little foot's cowering in the corner. It's all happening. It's a tough way to live. So Sean Connery, yeah, he was ninety years old, but like you know, his father would have instilled this sort of mentality in him. You know, what is? I think he your nose is dripping. Sorry to cut you off, mate. It? <laughs> it's bleeding again. <laughs> Sorry to cut you off. You are you are bleeding. You are bleeding on the podcast. <laughs> you know what I named this for our Patreon. Shout out to our live Patreon listeners who get this live every single week. Fuck, I love the Patreon. Uh, for a dollar, by the way, a dollar, you fucking tired asses. I named this, um, I'm, I can't stop bleeding or something Did like you? that. Yeah. yeah, nice, nice. Um, this nah, is shout the out to Patreon. I'm big fucking, I'm right in the Patreon. It makes me sleep well at night. Just And lordy has been filming all this like, not behind the scenes, but just extra content. So you get to catch up with that type of stuff. Secret episodes. Would have been nice to get the dog bite live on, like, oh. that would, I tell you what, that would have pumped the numbers up nicely. This is what's crazy about it. I get bitten and I feel bad. Yeah. Rosie, there's no apologies. No. And Rosie, the, guy, the thing you got to understand about Rosie is she's the sweetest thing in the world. Oh, I can see on your nose how sweet she is, mate. Oh, she's sweet, yeah. but she, she's got a dark side. She's a bit like Claire. <laughs> oh, Claire. Oh. I reckon Clary could fly off Oh, that yeah, handle. yeah. She's all like smiles and rainbows. And then when we when the door shuts at night time, I scour. I run. I run and hide under the covers until she goes. She's till she drinks herself stupid. I, I feel like I got a glimpse of it. The the clips of you guys at the UFC in Jacksonville, 
And sweet little niece St. Clary, you know, when we rock up and do the podcast, she's, anyone want a cup of tea or biscuits. some biscuits? And I'm just going to go put my Ugg boots on. And I'm like, no worries, Clary. And then I see this footage of you guys in Jacksonville. Christ! Absolute trailer trash. Yeah! Like, just, I was like, what the fuck is this? Um, yeah, so I believe Clary's got a dark side. She does. She does. She's beat me mercilessly millions of times. Maybe this is like, you know, when uh, like victims of domestic abuse are like, no, I just walked into a oh, door. the dog bit me. Yeah, Rosie, blaming, yeah, Rosie yeah. bit me. But in the car, Claire was like, mate, pull in. I want a chicken and juice. Claire gave him a, <laughs> oh, got to give him a slap. I want a chicken and juice <laughs> at Macca's before we go home. I Sometimes. Said, no, we've got to get home. We've got to get home. And she's like, oh, fuck that. With a big fucking engagement ring. What's <laughs> that? But Bluey and Lordy, she's like, fuck them. Fuck Bluey and who's Lordy? Oh, fucking Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm starting to see it now. It's all starting to come together. Oh, I'm sorry you had a fucking bad 12 hours, mate. I haven't really. No, I know. I've, I was being sarcastic. Oh, I've, it's, Hard enough. It's been fuck fine. Me. I've had a good day. I got to fucking see um, hell. got to see my grandparents down in Sydney, which was nice. And how's Nana? She fucking, the poor thing. She's had a, this lady, like, brought up by nuns. Her father came back from World War II and was in a celebration parade, run over and killed. Ooh. Like, insane. Ooh. Brought up by nuns. And then she has an accident. Um, and then she's been in hospital. She had a real, real bad problems with, like, her legs and her back and stuff. She gets into hospital just for trying to sort the leg issue out, catches COVID. <sighs> fine. She's fine. Yeah. But then a few other people in the ward catch it. They put the ward on lockdown for five weeks. She's in this brand new ward in, in Western Sydney. She doesn't have a TV for three weeks, not allowed visitors, doesn't have a phone in there. What does she do? Fuck it, I don't know, the poor thing. So she, she comes and sees, we go and see her today, and you should have seen the smile on her face. She's just like, oh, my God, human. Yeah, that would be nice. The poor thing. I'd lose my mind. Three weeks without a telly. Without people. And she, you can call her, but you've got to call the front desk. And then, mate, we went to this fucking, this, this hospital. They've got all these volunteers everywhere. They're not paying any money. And you go to the, oh, where's uh, Mrs. Butterfield? Oh, we don't, we're not allowed to know where the people are. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you here? doing? <laughs> Sit there. <laughs> do, do something. We're running around trying. And we found a, a beautiful couple, though, while we were looking around, um, who were at the Western Sydney show, uh, at nice. my show there. And they just had a baby. Uh, so congratulations to you guys. Little Evelyn was born yesterday. Nice. And she's in the in the NICU. She's doing well though, so that's good. Awesome. Um, so it was a positive day. Um, and yeah, sure, Rosie bit me, but I'll get her back. I'll um, give her feed a good her biscuits for the rest of the week. Feed a rat sack. Yeah, fucking <laughs> don't joke about that with Lordy here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Fuck yeah. Oh, he's, he's he's gone quiet. He's he's not laughing. Rat sack's no joke. I got bitten by a dog. I was in America, and uh, and there was this very terrified terrier. And I had some edibles, like weed edibles, and the weed edibles over there are like pretty fucking wild. I didn't know you went to America. Long time ago, it was yeah. like it was a couple of years ago, and I was only there briefly. It was kind of like a work thing, but and uh, and a I work was, thing. Like I was doing some videography work for a guy who had just planned this junket and decided he wanted to film it. So what I, were you filming? It was uh, for a gym. What? But what you're filming like so, and muscly then, guys? No, it was like so you filming was like gym? muscly dudes. I wish. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. No, it was for a gym, but then they teed up uh, something with a footy club over there, and they just wanted to document it. Um, just blokes getting hot. But it just ended up. It was in Vegas. This footy comp was it. So we were just there wasn't a lot of work getting done. We were just sourcing. Mm. But anyway, I had this weed edible, and I was on edge because I was really, really high in a foreign country. And this dog obviously picked up on that energy. This little foxy terrier, and it was on edge. And I just sort of tiptoed past it to go for a piss. And it followed me. And it was like staring at me and I couldn't piss. And then it bit me. <laughs> it bit me on the ankle. I was terrified. This dog bit me. I was like fucking freaking out. It was I, good. I walked nude past Littlefoot one day. <laughs> and he must have seen my little pecker and thought it was like a fucking a little snack. A little, little snack. That's because you're covered in, in peanut butter. Um, yeah, I know. I shouldn't have fucked the peanut butter, peanut butter first. But he went. He, he he was only little, so he didn't reach. Thank Christ. Is that saying my cock's high off the ground or it's tiny? You are tall. Um, and he jumps for it, misses my foreskin by a matter of inches. <laughs> Some people have said I'm missing by a matter of inches several times. What tried to tried to a, nip it? Yeah, right. That would have been disastrous. What's going on in this house? There's a bit. My wife's beating me. Your dog's trying to Rosie's eat Rosie's eating me nose. Littlefoot's trying to suck me off. It's all happening. Sounds like a fucking good day. <laughs> brought, to, brought to you by Bo Blake Beer. <laughs> yeah, Blake Beer. Denon Kemp, what a legend. Mm. Uh, did you catch up with the boys down there? I know uh, he had-, he had So, uh, Denon, Denan, 
Denon had this fucking mad setup with the boys from the um, Hello, Sport? Hello Sports podcast. Did you get to meet the fellas? No, nah, no, nah, I'm not cool enough. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. that sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, but I walked in there. Massive setup. Did you see what I shared on the gram? I'm off social media. Fuck. <laughs> don't you have a social media? No. Nah. I do, but Daily I, Blue News. Daily Blue News. But anyway, no. so there's this massive setup. It was like a live concert. There was so many people there. Yeah. Everyone listened to a live podcast. It was great. I said, Dan, congratulations, mate. Like That's such a credit to him and the hard yards that he's put in over the years, you know, with, with no monetary uh, benefit up until recently. Like, Just doing it for the love. Doing it for the love. And he's built like a whole business and mm. man, good fucking empire. Money. They're yeah. funny guys too, the Hello Sport Boys. They're, they're yeah, I'd funny. like to get to know them more, but yeah. I um I just can't talk that much footy. Yeah. I just, yeah. I could tell last week your your eyes were glazing over. Me oh. and Kempi were nerding out and you were oh, just like, partial I just I just can't get around footy as much as I used to. I used to love it. And then um when I sort of got into the UFC more because the, my favourite part of football is the aggression and the the ability or the, the the constant threat of violence. And that's why I love watching MMA because it's just violence. That's why your life is just constant, just, just constant threat violence. of violence. Yeah, you never know where you're going to get it. Dixon's going to throw an elbow. What about this? I went and watched my brother Finton play, uh, the local reserve grade soccer comp here in Newey. And Sounds like a thrilling afternoon. Oh, it was fucking 8 o'clock at night. Oh, oh what night? Like two, three nights ago, freezing. <sighs> and so he texts me, he goes, can you please come and watch? It's me first. I'm in mean, reserve grade for me first. He's only 17. He's doing well. That's nice. Playing in the goals, by the way. Oh, so oh. not a lot of action. Oh, he's he not going to be doing much. He did two things. Park yourself straight behind him and just sledge the fuck Ooh. out of him. You suck. Finton. <laughs> <laughs> so Game's out there. <laughs> he did a couple of good saves. But what about this? This uh, There's a bit of a contact between two uh, a defender and another bloke. Um, and the bloke on uh, Finton's team gives this bloke a bit of a nui in the back in the contact. Oof. It looked accidental. I don't like that. Looked like accidental. I think you're giving him the benefit of the doubt. So the other bloke gets up, skits it, blowing up that he's copped a nui. Mm. So then the bloke from Finton's team follows it up with a fucking headbutt. <laughs> I'll give you something to whinge about. <laughs> I'll give you something to whinge Big about. Big headbutt. And, 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 and Dad and, and Claire and I are sitting right in front of it and we're all like, this is fucking bullshit, boring. Oh, 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 <laughs> yes! <laughs> fucking give it to him! And we're going, and you, and you can hear Claire um, on the Bar TV broadcast, the local sporting broadcast. Claire, the redneck Claire came redneck out. Claire, yeah, she did. She did. Gross! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Yes! And he only got a yellow card Fuck. for a fucking headbutt. The most exciting thing that happened all game, I'm sure. I couldn't believe it. It was great. Yeah, good. Hmm. You know, we never talked about those beautiful photos that are up there. Not on the podcast. Not on the podcast. Do you Can wanna, we get them down for the, yeah, for the good do people? Do you want to describe them for the people? Well, I'll get, I'll get them down and have a, a get closer them down look. We'll have a closer look on the cameras because they're, they're a real conversation starter. Don't you reckon? Something. Let's. Which they're one should we go they're first? Direction starter. Let's start with this one, Lord. Are we going on this middle camera? What do you see there? Like, can we get the people can see that now? Up and across, says Lordy. Just if you're listening to this, I'll just I'll just describe to you what I'm looking at. Well, I've got to show the camera. Oh, sorry. So it no, is different a, photos. Uh, you fucking hot dog. I know, but I'm just going to describe the male in the photos. Tall, dark and handsome, beardless. Somewhere between three to five chins. Fuck off. Uh, Bintang singlet, possibly from a Bali trip, I'm assuming. I've never been to Bali. My Uncle Brett gave it to me. Uh, Very looking pretty stoked with himself. Blue. I'm going to call it a royal blue Ford Falcon L-plates. It's a Ford Falcon AU wagon. Oh, baller. Yeah. Uh, Looking pretty tough with himself. He's leaning on the sedan. What a fucking! As though it's some kind of Lamborghini or sports car. Did you do you think that all the sixteen or seventeen year old pussy in Newcastle at this point when this photo was taken? Not now, may I, I add. I assume you that <laughs> that's why you got the wagon to fit all the bitches in the back. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the big ones. Too. Also, I've just noticed in this photo, hilarious. Uh, someone may someone's in the background. They didn't know the photo was being taken. The car doors open and someone's oh, like that's looking. Pop. Pop, pops looking in the car for something. Pops, completely unaware of pops you. Checking it out. What am I even sitting on there? You're sitting on the toe ball, I assume, straight <laughs> up your ass. <laughs> no lube. It was a cold afternoon. Straight too. Straight on the toe ball. Man, that's a that's a lot. That was my first car. This that one, you're smug as fucking hell in this second one too. Oh, I think I the, look good in that. 
You no. look no, you look great. You just look smug. Look at that hairline, forward, straight up the middle. I could have been in the army with that. That's that's, that's a ruler's edge, isn't it? And you've got the uh, you've got the Warwick Farm hanging out the got window, the just Mate, fucking. That's check. ready for a skin cancer to grow right on that arm. Check me. I out. actually had a skin cancer, not a skin cancer, but it got cut out on that arm. I went for a check the other day. How'd you go? Good, good. Because I work in the sun and I'm pale, mm. so I go after every summer. I go right. It's time, and they get down to me. You undies. do that every summer. At uh, the end of every summer. Good on you, So, mate. like, obviously, well, I'm at risk because I'm a blood nut. You, you do have red hair. And I work in the sun. And I should be not exposed to the sun. Scottish heritage? Uh, English, yeah. English heritage. Yeah. Your mum's from England, right? Mum's from England. I was born in England. That's right. Yeah. You got to do a passport too. I do. I have two passports, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I go, yeah, fucking <laughs> big la <laughs> Passport dropper. <laughs> Yeah. Talking about dropping things, I was uh, talking about a mate of mine called Ben uh, to my brothers last night because we went to the footy with uh, Jonas and Finton and and uh, Darcy didn't go, but um, Darcy didn't go. And then Nana sent him a voicemail message <laughs> and she's so sweet, the poor thing. She's like, oh, Darcy, and and um, I know you were too busy uh, to come up. Uh, it was so funny. It was so sarcastic, but she didn't mean it. She goes, I know you've been very busy and... And I ran into Darcy when I got home and he was just on the lounge doing nothing. <laughs> Hand down his pants. Just like and like, oh, you've, I know you're really busy at the moment. Dorito crumbs all over him. Hand down his Morton. Like, <laughs> he's a funny guy. How big is he? He's a fucking tall. He's huge. He's tall. He's, he's, huge. T- he's taller than you. He's like a centimetre small than me. But he's fucking how, how much younger? He's still he's, growing. He's 18. He's still growing. And he, um, giant man and strong. Yeah. Strong as an ox. He'd have that Mongo strength. Never been to the gym in his life. Yeah. He'd have that man strength. Just, it's so weird. Like, we'll wrestle, wrestle. and he just destroys me. And yeah. I train every day. Yeah. And he just destroys There's me. There's those guys who are like, they, they can't lift anything in the gym. And then you get down to your undies and have a little wrestle with them. And they just pin you and you can't get up. Like, you're just, at their mercy. It's such a, like, dist- like a distorting, yeah, distorting. Yeah, it's, like a, it's emasculating. It's it. Is. When, you, when you, your little brother holds you down. The young bull. The young bull takes, takes on, on the, the uh, old ox. The season campaigner. We talked about this last time. I wouldn't want to take on my old dad. Nah. He scares me. Oh, your old man. And yeah. he'd have he'd be able to flip the switch to it and he wouldn't stop. I so reckon. we were driving through Benrith today and he was talking about all the spots he used to go to and he goes, oh, I was in a fight there. I was arrested there. I was charged there. I was, I was at the courthouse every three weeks and all this type of stuff. But he turned his life around, obviously did very well for himself. Yeah. Good on him. But yeah, it's weird to hear those stories about your old man. Yeah, and then by comparison, you look like an angel. I always used to think that with my parents. Yeah. They'd sort of give me, sh- like, I'd be like, I don't know, do something wrong at school. And I'd be like, I could be so much worse. Like, mm. I'd, I'd get like, you know, a teacher would ring up, like, yeah, he was talking, or my report card would be like, this dickhead talks too much. Yeah. And I'd be like, mum would be like, you need to pull your head in. I'm like, how about I go out and start doing drugs? Mm. And It like, could be worse. I could be fucking heaps worse. Like, how about I go out and like, paddy wagons can bring me back every weekend. Yeah. Shut up, mum, you bitch. <laughs> That's what I used to say. I like it. I like it. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's how you should talk give her to your slap. mum. <laughs> a slap. And she needs a slap. No, I love my mum. But my yeah. Mummy, did you hear Prince Charles, one of the royals? Did he say mummy? Uh, the, uh, he's the do- like 70. The Queen's Diamond Jubilee recently, and he, and he was talking about the Queen, and he paused and he went, mummy. <laughs> it was so weird. It was fucking so weird, man. He's mummy. And the crowd went, all those dirty poms. Mummy. Do you think do you think that you would would you right now if they said, Oh, do you want Australia to become a republic, would you do it? What would you would you vote yes? What are the pros and like It doesn't really matter. It just means that you're no longer sort of you're you're on your own, you're in the world, all that type of stuff. You don't have like the, the royal family yeah. overarching. So the Queen's not on our money. Yeah, that that would change and all that type of stuff. Do we change current we wouldn't change currencies, we don't No, use- we just they just start printing. New money, Different. I guess. That they, would be a good anyway, excuse apparently. for them to go to the cashless economy. They'd be like, oh, well, actually, oh, how about we just don't print any money and New World Order. We'll just look after everything for you guys. Don't worry about New it. New World Order, yeah. Um, yeah, money's real. Yeah. Um, no, I don't know. I don't know what I don't know enough about so the politically, I, well, economically. In in reality, there's a lot of laws that would need to be changed in the constitution, which I, I think is good. I think that it should it should start from scratch, but I wouldn't vote yes on a republic for Australia until the Queen dies. Yeah. Because I like her. She, I think may be, likes she may be a lizard. She may have killed Diana. One She's of probably son- killed a lot of people. One of her sons was boys with Epstein. One of her sons is definitely, maybe, definitely not a pedophile. And he doesn't sweat, apparently. And he definitely is not a pedophile. Yes, definitely not. That's why they paid out those victims. But I'd still let her, or I'd still vote no on a republic until she dies. Once Charles is in, 
Get out. Mummy. Mummy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know enough about it, but I, I don't know. I, I'd imagine a lot of Australians would probably want like the idea of us being. Here's a hypothetical for you. The, as far as the line of ascension? Accession? Yeah, ascension. ascension. I think you're right. As far as that goes, Queen dies, Charles is the king. Charles dies, William's the king. William dies, baby George is the king. Imagine if there's like a big fucking royal accident and they all get wiped out and George is the king. I'd like say King you, Baby. King Baby George. Make a Disney movie about How that. good would the King Baby George be? He's like four. <laughs> and he's like chocolate milk and all the bubblers. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get a pool. Yeah, yeah. the Freddo Frog tax would be abolished. Like Freddo Frog's like back to fucking five cents each. No more GST on Freddo Frogs. Mm, that'd be um, nice. I, actually, I'm in favour of that. Can I vote for that? <laughs> Can we kill the royals and make that happen? That'd be I'd nice. like, yeah, I'd be, I'd be down for that. I don't want William to die. I also don't want the Queen to die. I like, have you watched The Crown, the series on Netflix? Nah. It's really good. Have you watched that, Lord? It's good. It's a good It's a good series. And mm-hmm. I really got around it. And I just like the Queen. I know she's a lizard. I know she's all this shit. And she's probably been in charge. She's of- wildly popular. Like, everyone. She seems to be, like, unanimously loved. Like, you know, like, there's a lot of heads of state. And- yeah. Device How and politicians. Can you mad at her? Everyone loves the queen. She's a little old lady. Is she sweet? And she, I don't know. She's probably done some bad shit. I assume. I assume everyone. Okay, okay, okay. What about this? So let's talk the late, great um, fucking, what was her husband's name? Lordy, help us out. Queen's husband? Lord, Lord. Oh, Alfred. Uh, just, Alfred, that's a hospital, you fool. No, no, he just passed no, away that's recently. That's a dad. <laughs> fucking Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm um, sorry we're not up on the monarchy. <laughs> fucking, Jesus how do I Christ. not know this? He just died recently. I did a Daily Blue article about it. I should know too. Um, What's the guy that pulled Excalibur out of the King stone? Arthur. Was it him? King Arthur? Yeah, I think that was it. Was it King Arthur? Was it King Brown? King Brown that you get on the bottle shop after a long day at work, a nice King Brown. That's the only king I'll bow to. Oh, I know what it is. I've Googled it. But what What else? Come on, let's 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 work this out as oh, a team. We're all is, adults here. No, nah, this is terrible, isn't he, it? First, it was, it was Prince, not King. Prince, Prince Alfred? No, that's a hospital. Albuquerque? Mm-mm. Prince. Prince. Uh, Prince Purple Rain. <laughs> Purple Rain. You got one close with one letter. Prince Philip. Prince Philip, ladies Prince and gentlemen, Philip. who unfortunately passed away at the ripe old age of 400. Yeah, 400. This um, is why you listen to this podcast, to hear us bumble around one with simple- Simple tasks. Simple facts. That, that you'd know if you just watched a current affair. Yeah, but all listen to this. So Prince Philip gets to fuck the queen. Not anymore. No, he's, he's brown he's bread. Dead. He's brown bread. But Prince Philip used- to, So what happens in their sexual escapades? Does he walk in and say, Mummy. <laughs> Queenie, do you mind if I do you want to go up for a little ride on the old uh, the royal uh, disco stick? <laughs> I'm sure that's how it goes down. That's pretty horny. And she's like, "Oh, Philip." And you think like I imagine the queen like the medical care and access that, that would obviously be second to none. So he's getting the best Viagra. He's oh, getting yeah. he's getting the real stuff. The horn the horny goat weed he's getting. He's getting the whole Isn't the, that weird that they sell horny goat weed at at the supermarket? Here's one for you. Do you remember when you were coming up? Oh, I'm thinking 16, 17. When I was coming up. I remember just about every pharmacist I walked past yes. had a poster. When I was this age. You were that was that's a scary time. That's me looking people. for horny goat weed. <laughs> you are on horny goat weed in this photo. You are over the if you got RBT'd. <laughs> They'd be like, yeah, swab test, mate. And they'd be like, mate, get in the fucking paddy wagon. You are at that much horny goat weed. That's what pops pulling out of the car, just empty packets of horny get goat off, weed. Get off the toe ball, Isaac. <laughs> Got us like letting this fucking kid eat horny goat weed before he goes for a drive. He keeps fucking the toe ball. Yeah, I can't get the fucking boat on. <laughs> so, so <laughs> can't get the fucking jet ski on. I hope this is oil. Uh, Go on. Yeah. Um, what was I saying? Horny goat weed. Yeah, I remember, I just remember going past pharmacists and there was horny goat weed. Posters everywhere. They're yeah. like horny goat weed, but I don't see them anymore. What's the horny goat weed industry doing? Can we get them on? Can we get a horny goat weed sponsor? Sure, that'd be nice. I just want fucking some horny goat weed. Do we have a sponsor that don't miss, mate. Hey, do we need to do an ad for the good people at Don't Miss, mate? Don't miss, mate, and horny goat weed. Show us a don't miss, mate. Ladies and gentlemen, go and head to Don't Miss, mate. Uh, the link is down below. Never miss a piss in the dark again. I use this every night. It, fl- it lights up your toilet bowl when you walk in. It's got a sensor on it, so you don't piss on the floor. That's it. That's all you need to know. It's the best product on the market. Particularly handy if you have been on the horny goat weed and you've got an erection because urinating while you've got an erection is tricky business. I've sat down. I've bent over. What's your techie? What's your technique? Well, I like the sit down, but also that's a lot of bending 
and sometimes you can rub your head of your Morton on the toilet bowl, and I don't know how hygienic that is. Yeah, I can't imagine it'd be too good. I'm more of a bend over, sort of really hinge the hips, get everything tilted forward, and just and just go. Almost get your body at the same angle as your Morton and just and just let it rip. I've done it in the shower before. Yeah. I just jumped in the just shower. Pistol over the tiles. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. Yeah, no, nah, I can't imagine it would but be. But it's a tough learning curve. Yeah. I didn't know, and this is revealing too much about me. <laughs> I didn't know we you were supposed to pull back your foreskin until I was like 13 to what? pee. What, are you supposed to pull it back? Of course it is, you fucking idiots. Why are you supposed to do that? Do you have a fourie? Yeah, I'm just joking. <laughs> kind of. Well, well, this is I didn't know, and you know why? No, it's like it's one of because no things. one teaches it in health class. It's a rite of passage. My uncle taught me. Nice. He kept pulling it back. He I kept, was like, "Stop it!" <laughs> I was like, "How many times are you supposed to pull this fucking thing back?" I'm gonna let you pull this back another forty times, and then you need to stop. Oh, any more, and you're playing with it. Uh, I don't know how many. Yeah, I don't know. But my dad never. No, I learned very early. Jones never taught me because he doesn't have one, so he wouldn't know. So is Jones circumcised, and you're not. Yeah. That's one thing I fucking actually- Don't point at me when we're talking no, about your my dad's brother, penis. No, your brother used to shower in his undies at footy, and I hate that. Really? Yeah. I hate that. That's disgraceful. Yeah. You're supposed to see dicks after a tough game of footy. That is weird. Yeah. I Just just when you said he was circumcised, I was like, I've never seen your brother's dick. And I, that made me mad. You know, we- <laughs> I agree. I'm mad that about it. I'm glad that you haven't seen that it That fucking pissed me off that I haven't seen your brother's dick. Jonas, if you listen to this- He's not. You've got my fuck number. Fuck. He's a fuck. <laughs> so- Back when I was first started playing, I was a bit nervous about getting my dick out in the shower. Standing. Especially like before games. But <laughs> afterwards, like you just do it and then you're like, okay, whatever. Everyone's got a peen. Just nerd up. As long as you don't have the smallest dick in the team, you're cool. Yeah, I can't. I usually did. And I, I didn't. And I was like, sweet. As long as I don't have the smallest dick, it's good, right? But I, I, I feel sorry for those that do because that's tough. Yeah. That's tough to have a tiny Morton. It's when, tough life. <laughs> when we were in... um. America we went on this podcast and this guy called Rat Dick Ralph was on it. He was a fucking on Danny Mullen's podcast. He was a lunatic, wasn't he? He was off his head. Like With a name like full, that. Full drug addict. A name like that suggests that he might be and they just unstable. They just have him there as like a fucking weird hanger on. But he pulled his cock out and it was the smallest cock I've ever seen. Respect. No. Disrespect. Because it was so small that it was confronting. You can't help the body you're born with, mate. You think you'd get like an extension or something? Imagine if there was an exercise. You know, the gym, you're like, I want to work on the buys. I want to hit the fucking pecs today. Imagine if there was an exercise you could do to lengthen the stick. What do you think the exercise would be? Uh, What about like a nice, like hanging, like something you could hang off the mort and just have you get on the chin up bar and then hang dead hangs and just hang. Dead dead wangs. Have you seen those machines that you sort of like, they're, they're to train legs and ass? And you, you sort of wrap a belt around you and you squat, but there's nothing on top of you. It's just like pulls all, you down. All the, all the pressures on all your the hips. All the pressures on your hips. It's like one of those, but it's all on your cock. All on your mort. And yeah. you're like the rock, like Dwayne the Rock Johnson is like the bloke who's invented it. And he's like, listen, if you want to smell what I'm cooking, yeah. you need to wrap this around your That could be, and, with the don't miss, mate, that could be your next invention. The like stretcher. The, this could be your next product. Get out of the stretcher. Yeah. I wonder what it's like, like being a lady or a, like, I don't know. A gay dude's into like big dicks. Like, is that a thing? Yeah, I assume so. Well, is that it? But do you want a big dick or do you want like a medium dick? Because if you've got a big dick and you're a gay dude, like that's going to cause, if, if you're not, if you've got a good stretchy arsehole, then you're cool. But if you don't have a big stretchy arsehole, you're in strife, right? Like that thing's coming in and you know he's not going to be nice about it. Yeah, he might. He might be passionate. But I feel like being you're generalizing. Mm. There's passionate gay lovers out there. No, Gen- I'm not. Gentle. I'm sure there is. Yeah. Oh, I've never met him. <laughs> Back to my uncle. <laughs> I, I think though, with, with girls, like they're like, because some girls like the big dicks, some like the little dicks. I don't know if any like the little dicks actually. Medium dicks. They I, they say they do. <laughs> they say they do. It's nice. But do you want yeah. someone to pull out a big twelve incher? Like like that's confronting shit. Like if someone pulls out a big fucking knob. Like Christ. Yeah, I did find myself, you know, back to the nude footy shower talk. You know, you sizing the other boys up sometimes and you'd be like, fuck, that's pretty, that's nice. Oh, mate, there was this one bloke. You see some some pieces, you're like, fuck, that's silky. There was one. <laughs> that's good. There was one bloke that had a, the biggest dick I've ever seen. Mm. And it was like, every, he just never wore pants. He didn't care. Like, some, you know, you get out of the shower playing footy just or to whatever. play without pants on. <laughs> like, you just get out socks of, and a jersey and boots. <laughs> you get one sock for his cock. You'd play footy, you'd shower, and then you, you know, you'd quickly get changed and, and you know dry yourself and all that type of stuff. He 
conversations, yeah. have a food. He's out there with like mum and the kids and he's like shaking hands. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a good game. Good game. Like, in the breeze. Put some pants Pour some on. pants on. Um, it's nice. Did you, ever, did you ever get a bit of blood in it before? Like to, you know, like you just, you're going to go out nude with the boys and like, fuck, I better, better work no. it up a bit. No, I never. Nah, neither. I never warned my cock up before I got in the shower. Neither did me mates, no. No. Nah. Sometimes you do it too much and you go out like a full stag. What like about full like barred up and you're like, oh fuck, I've gone too far here, boys. <laughs> you're like walking around with a full mongrel. <laughs> you're trying to piss in the toilet before like, the game oh, with a hard on. Fuck, so weird. I've got a full boner right now. Sorry, boys. Oh fuck, man. I'm just really pumped about the win. I've had one of the best games. Sorry, in my boys. Life. That was a fucking great win. I fucking love you guys. Great you just win, man. Shoved up. <laughs> Isn't that the thing, like, if you've got a really bad concussion, you get a, an erection? I've heard, yeah, when you get knocked out, probably. Yeah. Like, I, actually, when I was, you know, remember, remember League Safe? Yes. So to become, like, a water boy in, in the rugby league sort of thing, you have to do a League Safe thing. It treat, teaches you, like, how to fucking strap up a broken leg or something. <laughs> how to get an erection down. How to get an erection down. But dead set, one of these guys taught us, and we were learning how to train kids. He said to us, if you suspect a spinal injury... You can always check to see if they've got an erection. Nice. I don't. Have, I never did that, but I reckon. <laughs> Should just do it to be safe. Just to be safe, like just walk up to people on the street. You know, your spine's fine. You're like, so. I'm fine. Stop touching my cock. It's my ankle. Yeah, I've done my shoulder, and they're like, just I just got to check. Just, just trust me, bro. I just got it. You're like, what the fuck are you doing? Nah, it's fine. It is fine. Oh, it's really stretchy. Oh, it's hard now. Jesus Christ! <laughs> we better get you in that ambulance, son. Yeah. Yeah. For a bunch of hetero, like, footy players, like, is all, you know, they're all, like, oh, big heterosexual buff dudes, love rooting chicks. Footy <laughs> players do some, like, there's some gay. At Central. There's some super gay stuff. At Central one year when you were playing. Blokes no, were I was doing, overseas. I heard about this. I was overseas. I was in England at the time. So we don't want to name the club, but Central Charleston <laughs> Rugby League Club. There were blokes doing shots of alcohol out of each other's foreskins. It's called a bird bath and it's out of the scrotum. Oh, Zach. Oh, really? I wasn't there. But Why wouldn't you do it out of the forey? That's so much better. Some of scr- How no. stretches your scrotum? How stretches your forey? Pretty stretchy. <laughs> it's like you have to see your foreskin. Yeah, sure. yeah no, it's got a bird bath. It's pretty common. Is it? Around where I'm from, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, but like rugby league players are like big hetero, like, uh, yeah, man, man. They do some fucking pretty questionably gay stuff. It is really, really weird, really weird that- you know, you play footy, you go out there and you smash each other and smash go on a war. Each other. And then 10 minutes later, you're all nude in the showers going, oh my God, you play love, so well. I love you guys. <laughs> um, love you boys. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's maybe repressed sexuality for a lot of dudes. You get a lot of wrestling and touching. I don't know, who knows? It's all good. Oh no, I fucking love it. <laughs> yeah, I do miss playing footy occasionally. I don't, I don't miss it. You don't miss it? Nah. Do you think you'll ever play again? Nah, I, to be fair, I have stayed away from the club this year because I know I, I would get lured get back dragged into it, but then I just get hurt straight away. Mm. Like I just get back, I get my boner, get hurt. It's I'll fun. It's fun for a while, but it's just it's too risky, man. Too risky. Too risky. Too risky. I got to protect this big fucking that melon. nose. You got to look after that nose. Christ, this nose is all I've have got. Seen, have you seen the surgeon yet? You fucking. I got to get a, that thing stitched up. I've got a um, plastic surgeon coming over here to throw a couple of stitches in it. Is it a rhinoplasty when you get your nose done? Yeah. Mm. Do you reckon I need a couple of stitches? Oh. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I better get Domino's for dinner too. <laughs> <laughs> just to celebrate. Just to really, just like you like, oh, I'm going to eat my feelings. Oh I had a bad, bad day. Good, and good sometimes, I'll tell you what. You're not getting Domino's for dinner, are you? No, no, no. I was gonna, we're you, going away tomorrow, so we've got to chill out. Yeah. So I'll be eating shit food on the on the road. So oh. I'll probably just cook What do you up. eat when you're on the road? Just cocks. Just big, dirty cocks. Just bag of dicks every no, night mate, on stage. Mate, we, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll go to, um, we'll go to, Different places and get different. It depends, you know, pub food or in the afternoon. I've started eating like two or three in the Arvo instead of straight before the show because I just get on stage and start burping. That'd be nice. It's not great. <laughs> it's not- I, have I t- have I talked to you since I've had the man flu? Yeah, we spoke about it last week with Denon. He looked bored. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Man, I was concerned that I wouldn't eat again. Yeah, you were, I remember you said. I remember you were you were building up to like I had this crazy thought while I had the flu, and I was sitting there going, "This is gonna be fucking so stupid." What he was thinking, and you were, I was like, right, and you went, "Yeah," and I just like I thought I was never gonna be able to eat again. And I was like, oh my. Remember, I said, does the flu also make you retarded too? <laughs> <laughs> One of the symptoms is you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> that is that is dead set how my brain works. Yeah. One thing. I, okay, so this is the, this is the dumbest story, right? It's called, it's called catastrophizing, I think. Yeah. So when you go like worst case, I do it all the time. Sure. But I know that I'm doing it. Mm. Like, but you do, you go like, oh my God, what if my, what if I can't eat again? I used to do it every time mama picked me up from school and she was late. She's yeah. dead. She's not coming. She's, She's not dead. Coming. She's dead. She's dead. Every time. 
I do it all. I do it every day. Like, and it's. I think it's pretty normal. I, I'd say like I would say anxious people probably do it because you're thinking yes. a lot and you just go like you're always thinking worst case worst scenario. case scenario immediately. Mate, my two most retarded. I'll go with the first most retarded, second most retarded, then the first most retarded. Of course, second the natural order of things was we went out uh, for dinner in Derby Street here in Newcastle and we went and got an ice cream afterwards. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. There's a couple cream. of nice ice cream spots, little gelato spots. There are on Derby Street. Fuck yeah. Awesome. I love gelato. So anyway, Claire got this little um, a little, little ice cream and I got this one in this charcoal cone. Yep. Right? I don't know why. It was like a charcoal like cone. Like a black. I know, yeah. I don't know why it was that. Why were the, you drawn to that, do you think? The black, well, spher- that was the only- black spherical object. Why were you drawn <gasps> to that, do you think? No, it was just because that was the only cone they had. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, anyway, so I eat that, as you often do with cones. Get home. Three or four hours later. You can smoke them too. Three or four hours later. My tongue's going blue. <laughs> I sort of see it like I'm, I go to like brush my teeth or whatever. Blue tongue. We've got a blue tongue, man. So, of course, my first move, Google it. Oh, you're fucking, you're losing blood pressure. Yeah. Like, you know, you if this is something, you probably need to go to the hospital. Like, you, yeah. know, you need to start working out what's hey, going Dr. on. Dr. Google for just making you Fuck terrified. Me. Do, do not Google anything. It's the worst move you could do. And so I'm freaking out. I'm trying to go back through my whole day. I'm like, I didn't eat anything blue. You know, I haven't had any lollies or anything like that. There's nothing that's blue in my day. Must be dying. I must be dead. Something's happening. And and all of like, like let me let me Google. Um, my t- tongue is like blue tongue. Tongue turning blue. Oh, God, tongue turning black. Jesus, that's not good. That'd be nice. Tongue turning blue. Your tongue does look a bit black. A purple or blue tongue could be a sign that your blood isn't delivering enough oxygen to your body's tissues. Oh, God. So I just naturally assume death is around the corner. It can't be far off. And it's all over. So actually, this was the fucking, this is the image that I saw. See how it's got all that shit? It's all like little photos of tongues. And here it says lack of oxygen or eczema. Now, I don't have eczema. It can, must it have been lack of oxygen. It could only be. It was the fucking dye in the ice cream cone. Yeah. Yeah, I could have, I could have told you that. Right? <laughs> but. And, and that hits me after two hours of panicking. And yeah. then the worst one. Yelling at Claire, get, get me to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> the worst one. Yeah. Can you see my eye here? See right in the corner Yeah, how I've got like, it's like where your tear duct is, right? Something like that, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. sounds so dumb here. This, yeah, this will be good. <laughs> So Hold I, on to your hats, folks. <laughs> this will be a fucking cracker. Grab onto your stiffies. <laughs> so I look at the corner of my eye and I see these two sort of indentations in. And I go, oh, no. What are these? Like, as my eyes sunken in and I'm in the mirror going, I'm trying to fucking work out what's going on, full spacking out. Going, looking, oh, my God, I got a hot, like, you know, what is happening here? I'm Googling eyes. <laughs> Googling people's eyes. Sunken eye. Do you know what? Do you know what it was? Uh, I don't know. It was my eye. It was just your Everyone's eye. Everyone's eye looks like it. But yeah. for me, for two hours, panic mode. Mm. I am fucking insane. And then when I had uh, the flu the other week, didn't feel like dinner, thought I was never going to eat never again. Never going to eat again. Man, I'm a fucking spastic, honestly. Yeah, it's How good. I have a multi-billion dollar business. Hey. Never know. Anyone can make it. You serve as an inspiration for a lot of people. Just that anyone can do it. Literally anyone. Literally any idiot. <laughs> any fucking idiot. People say to me, how do you get up on stage and tell jokes? Well, I'm very any- anxious. I'm a catastrophizer. I'm an anxious wreck. I always think I'm going to have a seizure. Uh, but that's working. I can I fake see- it through. <laughs> it seems to be going all right, mate. I can it seems- fake it on the way through. You're making a good fist of it. Yeah, no, it's going well, mate. It's going good. Well, what, going uh, well. what shows you got on the horizon? Mate, uh, last weekend, um, because, well, this is actually this weekend. Yeah, we're so going, last we're going weekend just away. gone. Yeah, weekend just gone, Gold which Coast? is actually tomorrow. Uh, Brisbane, sold out. Oh. Massive show. Beautiful fucking oath. How's this? The last, no, not the last two times, but the last time and the time before that, time time before that, I've done Brisbane. My idiot, idiot tour manager booked at the same night as State of Origin. That's Fucking talking about fucking retarded action. That is the dumbest shit I've ever that heard. That tops the blue tongue. That, that is, tops it all. Who the fuck's responsible for that? Some fuck up. Dumb. Are they listening to this right now? Nah, fuck him. I hope is he fuck him off after that? He's gone. How do you do that? Twice. Didn't do it twice. Yeah. There's only three games in the series, you fucking <laughs> idiot. 
No, it was over two different years. Oh, you did it two years in a row. That. Yes. Isaac, I'm hey. a fucking dumb scaffy. I'm fairly sure I'll fucking do a better job tour managing you than that. In, in his defense, he did one show. One was in uh, the Sunshine Coast <laughs> and one was in Brisbane. Oh, and all good. Oh, no, that's fine. To make it even better, the Brisbane show, which was last year, State of Origin, was also in Brisbane. Yeah. He would have been like, why can't we book it at the Caxton Hotel? <laughs> I tried to book the Caxton, but there must be something on that night. <laughs> yeah, you fucking idiot. But you know what? We sold out. <laughs> And really? the first thing I said when really? I walked on stage, I said, listen, Really? Listen. On Origin Night. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. And were I, you sure you, and I bet you were on <laughs> when Origin, like time. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. It's a five past eight kickoff. Yep. Wow. And the people in Brisbane still stuck around for the whole show. Shout and, out and Brisbane. Oh, mate. I love my Brisbane people. Fuck They're fucking yeah. legends. That's Shit rugby league supporters, but absolute they legends. Gi- they gave us a bath last night. Absolute Fuck legends. So that's what I've got on. And then I've got the Gold Coast on Sunday. So Beautiful. That'll be, that'll be really, really good. And then I have two months of nothing. Cruising. But a, but a wedding. Yeah, boy. But a wedding. A wedding coming up in on the 23rd of July. So uh, I will be married, which is so cool. That's gay. And so terrifying at the same time. That's it. I can't wait. Oh, man, I'm so pumped. I'm going to get so drunk. Do it. Because the just, fucking venue charged a fortune yeah. for beer, so drink as much as you And if you're you nervous, because I know you're nervous. I'm just nervous about all the time. Speaking. You're nervous every day. Every, yeah, day. every minute of every, every day. Every minute of every day. But I will take the heat off you by getting blackout drunk Thank and you. making a complete fuck out of myself man, at the I love, I love speeches. Yeah. I love speeches. I love them about myself. I love talking about myself. I find that easy. I love talking about people I really love. Um, I don't like doing – I love doing stand-up. But the worst type of public speaking for me, one I'll never do is a funeral. Yeah. Can't do it. Only because you shouldn't be making jokes. <laughs> get a load of, of this dead fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else feel a bit stiff around here? Hey, 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 hey. hey, hey, hey. hey. Shut the veal. <laughs> Hey, what about this guy? Hey, wake up. Oh, oh I've had the worst day. Rosie bit me nose. <laughs> Not as bad as this guy, am I right? <laughs> He's dead. Um, and weddings. I'll never MC another wedding. I am saying wedding sucks. I am saying nah, it doesn't suck. It's Matt Reddy's right. wedding and Raquel's wedding. Um, two of my best friends, and I hated it because yeah. it's their big day, and you don't you don't get to kick back and no en- enjoy it because you kind of re- you're responsible for like yeah. how it runs, and you don't get to just sit back and revel and get drunk like oh. everyone. You got to keep it tidy for a at, bit. At Red's wedding, um, they hadn't really organised the music at the ceremony, so like last minute, Matt goes, "Hey." Do you, you got, mind? You got a Spotify account? Do you mind playing the music? And I was like, Yeah. Well, do you have got a playlist? He goes, No. Nah, just this. Play this one song. Play it now. And then until Raquel, just keep playing it until Raquel walks down. The exact same thing happened to me at a mate's wedding uh, a few years ago. And the mother of the bride came up to me with a UE boom and said, "When you see it, can you just hit play?" I was like, "Are you fucking serious?" Well, like, they, I've, had, they told- I've had ten stubbies. I'm like, "What the <laughs> fuck do you want me to?" Cannot connect. Then I just hit like Nookie by Limp Biscuit as she came down. And I didn't really. <laughs> But that'd be fucking nice. So um, Raquel, his wife, walks down. Well, she doesn't walk down. They, they go, you got to play it now when Matt walks down and then keep the song playing for when her – she's just keep playing. And she's late. Yeah, they're fucking always late, those selfish bitches. So she's late. So this Get song – time. This song, and Xavier, follow a son. Follow, follow oh, the son. How original. I haven't heard that at many weddings. Beautiful song. Yeah. Love That's it. why everyone picks it. And it got, I played it fucking 14 times. Yeah. So it just ends nowhere to be found. That's the thing. These selfish bitches think that day's about them. And Get Red, there on time. Red just gives me the naughty gas. Play it again. <laughs> Play it again, butts. Yeah. One more time, Butterfield. Yeah. If you fucking pull that shit on me at your wedding, well, I will this? fucking play Nookie by Limp Bizkit. What do, you, what do you think about this? You know how when you when you get married, you're supposed to wait and, you, and your wife walks down the aisle and it's a big thing. <laughs> Yeah, that's you. <laughs> I can't do it. She I, just looks, and I'll be going, "Gay, stop crying, you gay." What you stiffy away, Butterfield? Oh, Putsy's crying if I look at him. <laughs> what a fucking homo! Oh, that's so gay, bro. <laughs> yeah, that'll be me. Six o'clock, by the way. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, so what we're gonna do? Because I. Claire gets too nervous about it. Is too nervous about. It. I'm too nervous about it. We're gonna do a first look. So we're going to see each other before the ceremony. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's bad luck, isn't it? No. You know what's bad luck? You know what's bad luck? Forming a relationship with a person you hate. But plenty of people do that. There's a lot of that. At least we really, really fucking like each other. So 
Um, I am no. concerned about the domestic abuse. From Claire's point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. she's beating the shit out of me. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm the I'm, fucking, I'm worried. Mate. I'm weak. I'm here. Weak of the news. If you need me, I'm here. So we're going to, um, I'm getting ready at my house and Claire's getting ready at her parents' house, which is like a stone's throw away from each other. Yep. So we'll go there. And we'll do the first look there, see a beautiful in a dress, see me looking stunning in my suit from Rundle's Taylor and go and check them out. The Shout boys. out Rundle's. They're the fucking boys. Uh, I tell you. They do, I've heard there's something fucking very tidy planned for your wedding, like your your suit. You've got some nice oh, customization options. Oh, mate. You wait till you see the customization on this suit. And the story behind it is actually pretty uh, – I'm really proud. We'll do a post-wedding podcast. We should. You should do it in the – would that be bad taste to do the podcast in your wedding tux? <laughs> and I'll wear Claire's dress. <laughs> <laughs> Smoke stogies and drink whiskey. I'd love that. I'd love to come back here. Uh, maybe I won't wear the dress. That could be too far. We've got to do a podcast outside so we can smoke those cigars. We 100% need to be smoking and drinking more on this podcast. There is not enough abuse. Well, okay. Next time it's not fucking blowing a gale. And fucking cold, man. It's so cold at the well, moment. Well, we can put the, fo- get the fire going. What Once we-, we have those microphones. Oh, we can go and sit up there. That'd and, be nice. Yeah, and let's drink, do that. Drink whiskey and do some smoke stogies. Drink some whiskey. Oh, that sounds nice. Yeah, so we're going to do that. And we're catching a very special type of car into the, the wedding. Did I tell you what that was? Is it a Hyundai Getz? It is a Hyundai Azuzu yeah. G-Max. No, it's uh, the old Newcastle tram. Ah, oh, sick. Yeah, the I've famous seen that. Newcastle tram that gets around on wheels now. That's sick. And it holds 28 people. So we'll get the groom's That's party, sick. the bride's party, all the parents, and we're all going to go in together. So it's not this big stress fest of when's the bride going to arrive? We're all there at the same time. That's great. We get the fucking ceremony done and we get on the piss. That's that's the nice thing. The, I've been to a few weddings <coughs> where like you have this big, long blah, 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 and the Lord onto this couple, shut the fuck up, marry him, and let's go let's drill party. an open bar. Because it. it is at the end of the day, like obviously everyone wants to it's see it's a party, it. and it is it is nice to hear some. Like, I do love seeing father of the brides, like big burly men, get up there and just go, They're my baby girl. Oh, how do you I re- do I do like that. How do you reckon Jones is going to go? Yeah, it'll be good. It'll be a fifteen minute speech. He, about it'll how, be good. How Jonas is his favourite son, but it's obviously mean, happy Isaac's here. It'll be good. It was nice of Isaac to come today, but Jonas is playing some great footy at the moment. Jonas in third grade central. Yeah, she's doing very good. Yeah, I've been in him. I was in him. Your old man will talk for fucking eternity. Well, I said, to Have him, you capped him? Have I said. To the this. DJ, I said, I want play him off. Play him off. Yeah, <laughs> I want him to play him off. Start the old orchestra music. The DJs look at you and you're like, play this. Off. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll have to say this, Blue. When I used to play football, every time I'd have a, a like a head knock early on, I'd play my best footy because mm. you're not scared. Your anymore. inhibitions are out the window. You don't care. That's the worst thing that can happen. I tell you what. Rosie bite me on the nose, really not made this podcast. We've had a great show. We've done an hour. You fucking, I will say, you sulked. You sulked for the first 10 or 15, then you come good, and you come good in a big way. I've you fucking, came home strong. I really brought it home for the boys. You, you, I was concerned early. Lordy and I were concerned early. You were. You didn't even come and see us. Normally before the show starts, we have a bit of band. How's everyone going? You sat out there like a fucking sook. <laughs> For like 10 minutes, me and Lordy were sitting going, is this cunt going to come in here and do I the sent, show? I set up the, the Patreon people. G'day, live Patreon, fucking, $1 a month. Fucking love G'day. you guys. Um, you sulked out there and then I, know, I was in. sending the fucking link to this fucking idiot there and was, then he runs around going, where's the link? Where's the link? I said, I sent you the link. That was fucking pretty stupid, Lordy. He's out there staring at my computer <laughs> screen going, where's the link? I said, I sent you the fucking link. Post the link, James. Anyway, it come good. I think it was a good episode. Obviously, it's your dinner time, I feel like. It's five past six. I've had 15 coffees. I've been in a punch on with me dog. You've had a can. Claire's up there. She's just fucking hitting the bag, ready to fucking take me on. Who does shadow box? I hope she punches the fuck out of you. Nah, but um, I've got to go pack for tomorrow. Yeah, nice. I've got to piss badly too. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us here on the Cancer Me Now podcast. Remember, you can watch this live each and every week for just a dollar a month. You can also get access to bonus episodes and heaps of extra content, uh, particularly when we're on the road, stand-up clips that you haven't seen before. And if you're on Patreon watching this right now, um, we'll stop recording in a second and I will expose my cock and balls to all of you. So, Fuck yeah, uh, I'll do that, that too. Yeah. I'll do that too. We'll get that, We'll have a wrestle with our dicks. We'll tie them together and, and do a piss and see who breaks first. Ladies and gentlemen, have a great day. doodle wop wop Bye-bye. Fuck, I hate the audience. Yeah, that was fucking... <laughs> that was fucking <laughs> Is mic still on? <laughs> oh, shit. Fuck that guy.
I hear I'm chat to the noise, move too quick, can't stop for the talking. I hear I'm chat with the boys, man so tough, but man's keep walking. Ladies and gentlemen, I am on tour right now. Live comedy is back. I'm going across the country and New Zealand in 2022, and I want to see you there. I want to make you laugh. I want to make you smile, and I, I want to offend you. Head to isaacbutterfield.com forward slash tickets right now now okay that's where you need to go get your tickets they are selling out fast live stand-up comedy is back the buttsman is back and i am absolutely pumped to come to your part of the world